Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to our session with uh, Dr. Tracy Elliott. Dr. Tracy Elliott is the Dean of Library and an instructor at Florida Gulf Coast University. Um, myself is Eran Segal. I am uh, the founder and former CEO of Alethea, currently Senior Director of Product over at uh, Clarivate. Um, so the pain that we address over at Alethea um, caters to the heart of the higher education system, and it is the lack of preparation or the ga gap of, in preparation between K-12 and higher ed, coupled with uh, the decline in proficiency and really comprehension, leads to an incre incredibly uh, tremulous uh, period of onboarding in first year of college, um, which yields um, lower confidence, um, increased um, uh, feeling of distress, mental distress, uh, which ultimately uh, accumulate in rising DFW rates. Um, it's so unsurprising then with the advent of the machine at uh, the tail end of 2021 uh, with the rise of ChatGPT, we're seeing a huge uh, increased uh, uh, utilization of those machines for less than pristine causes. Um, Tracy, what have you been seeing? So, exactly. I've been um, in libraries for a long time, over 30 years, and as a librarian teaching information literacy and doing assessments of that work that we do, we find that students have a very difficult time summarizing evidence from a text and then synthesizing it into their paper. And this goes from freshman year all the way to graduate school. As an instructor, I continue to see that at, you know, from the instructor side, I teach in library science and in education. So that has been really frustrating for me to see students struggle with the ability to really be able to take a, a piece of evidence or a source and summarize it succinctly. That's exactly our mission, right? Uh... So the idea of Alethea, which started um, at, the, at the, the very beginning of, of the age of the lockdown periods uh, in 2020, the idea there was to facilitate for self-directed and self-regulated learning um, by leveraging uh, scientifically proven uh, behavioral uh, psychology and metacognitive processes uh, essentially leaning on the work of uh, Richard E. Mayers. And then later on, uh, to blend it with generative AI that does exactly the opposite or flips the script on the common use case of tools such as ChatGPT uh, by actually offering students um, kind of like a Socratic interlocutor uh, that would offer these leveraging scaffolding questions to help the students get deeper into the core of the matter. Um, the whole point here is to drive and elevate students' capacity to think critically and to engage meaningfully with uh, the academic tech. Tracy, this is exactly our point of partnership, I think. Um, to do this um, by no means uh, pushes the instructor out of out of the picture, right? The whole point here is to offer the instructors these kind of like Ironman suits, right? Like to supercharge them and to complement their own unique individual personal learning style and objectives, and to offer them actionable insights into the course readings and into the students individual. So with that, let us take a quick look into the demo and we'll be back. We'll take uh, a, more of a conversation uh, with Dr. Elliot. There are three steps in Alethea's standard task. In step one, the student surveys the task and seeks relevant passages that answer their instructor's question. In step two, they will review their selections from the previous step and converse with our AI-driven academic coach. And in step three, the students will submit a full open-ended answer to their instructor's questions. Let's get a bit deeper. Upon entering the task, the student is to take a moment and soak in the question assigned by the instructor. These questions establish the foundational learning objectives and trace the way forward. As the student goes through the text, they are purposefully seeking answers to correlate with the questions, thus shifting the reading experience to an active and focused procedure. As they do so, they are also compiling external memory banks for each unique question. This novel approach to academic reading 
also allows our users to maintain reading fluency and focus and to avoid attention splitting and distractions. In step two, the student goes deeper and review their selections from the previous step. Once they get a grip on their selections, the student may start the conversations with Alethea's academic coach. Alethea's academic coach flips the script on the widespread academic misuse of tools like ChatGPT, both figuratively and literally. Instead of the student delegating their work to the machine, Alethea's academic coach is the one that's asking the questions prompting the student to deeply and critically engage with the reading materials. Think of it as an automating teaching assistant at scale. The coach is designed to quote unquote, understand the text, how the instructor's questions relate to it and the selections made by the student. Through scaffolding leading questions, the coach supports the student in forming a strong answer. When the conversations conclude, the coach aggregates the student's responses and auto-generates an answer based on the student's own input and unique voice. As such, Alethea provides the institution with guardrails to protect from abuse of generative AI technology by leveraging generative AI technology in an academically responsible way. Tracy, obviously, as you've introduced yourself and we know very, very well, you wear multiple hats, right? One of them being your hat as the Dean of the library over at FGCU and the other um, is the Dean or the instructor, right? Your, your professor hat. Um, and with that, I'll, I'll like to start um, with you being the, the Dean of the library. So both us together and you and your own device have had um, rather unique experiences talking to different stakeholders in the university the Dean of, of uh, Digital Learning, the Provost. Um, and of course, more and more engaged interactions with the, with the instructors. How do you see Alethea fit in with your vision of the university or the, the, the library of the tomorrow, right? The university library of the tomorrow, share with us. As you said, it puts the text front and center in the classroom. And it is the basis for all learning. And the library, invest, the university provides the library the funding to invest in millions and millions of dollars worth of resources that is are arguably underutilized and regardless of what institution you're you're at. And what this does is it allows the faculty to build a course around those materials that the library purchases. But not just what they purchase, but the primary resources that they are they are collecting in our institutional repositories and in our digital archives for special collections and university archives. So it it elevates the role of the resources that the library is providing. Not only that, as I said, it helps us to get to our end game with information literacy. We, we find when we do assessments that students find wonderful sources. They're authoritative, they're peer reviewed, they're all the things that we want them to have in their papers and to use as evidence. But what we find is they don't know how to use them as evidence. They either don't understand what they're reading, so they're interpreted in incorrectly, or they're there's no connection at all <laughs> between their sources and what they're writing. And so for the library, it, it, it's, it's a natural fit. It's something that I can't imagine any library dean would see and not want to learn more about it because it, it is it even opened up for us faculty who now want to, to replace their textbooks that by using Aletheia, they realize just how much that textbook falls short on what they're trying to teach their students. And they feel like it's more of a distraction than a help. So we can help them as librarians, we can help them find alternative resources or even build their own textbook. So that has been a win-win here at FJCU in so many ways. So it puts the library front and center it involved in the building of the curriculum been also leading to showing the library and our resources and services impact 
on student success. We discussed the Provo strategic aims, right? How, that, that fits right in there? Absolutely. Uh, and in Florida, we have uh, this wonderful thing called performance funding metric. That's all about our students meeting uh, student success factors. So things like graduation in four years, six-year graduation rate, Pell Grant six-year graduation rate, et cetera, you know, univer uh, underrepresented minority performance gap, those kind of things. So this tool is proving to level the playing field. And for the provost, that's all he needs to hear because his goal, of course, is for every student at our university to be successful and meet their goals and preferably in a, a way that lets them achieve the learning objectives of the programs that they're in and graduate on time and be prepared for life and for their, their uh, careers. One of the main uh, um, goals of Aletheia, objectives of Aletheia, was to provide instructors with this different or perhaps even unprecedented lens, right, into um, the progress, development, or, or, you know, needs of the students and the classroom as a whole. Um, how have you been utilizing Aletheia? Can you tell us more of what kind of insights you've been gaining out of that? Well, I, I agree about the insight. So for me, I feel like I've, I've stolen um, Alice's looking glass. And now I can see exactly where I lose my students, either in my lectures or, or in the text, right? So when I ask them a question in Aletheia and they can't answer, they can't find the answer in the text or they find the answer, and they can't put it in their own words, to me, that means that they don't understand what, what the text is telling them and what I'm telling them. So whatever the author is telling them. And that allows me to readjust and, and change my teaching. So I can then quickly create a, a lecture. I can provide other resources to them so that they can hear it in a different way than the way that I'm teaching. If I feel like, well, no matter how I say it, I'm not saying it right or, or I'm not saying it in a way that they can understand it. So maybe I should use all other resources or find other assignments that will help them understand better how to apply what they're learning. While on that topic, right? So Alethea always has been on this handshake, so to speak, right? Between faculty and, and, and the students. Um, how and, and how does that translate? I mean, how effective are we in our mission, right, to, and, and, and this is like the foundational blocks of, of any metacognitive theory, right, to, to strengthen students' identity as such, as a student, right, to, to strengthen their the sense of belonging uh, to a classroom, to a curriculum, to a syllabus. Yeah, as a matter of fact, I'm, I'm engaged in a research project right now um, using Bandora's self-efficacy theory of students. And what I have learned from my, and I, I had an inkling, right? I, I figured they weren't reading because it was showing that they weren't reading the, the course materials. And, and then what I learned after I started using Aletheia is they were reading, but they still suffered from sort of an imposter syndrome, whether they actually believed they couldn't learn from reading textbooks. They were very, very um, dependent on direct quoting and paraphrasing the text, which of course does not demonstrate, demonstrate whether or not they truly understand. What I heard from my students is oh, so many great things. Some of them, as a matter of fact, quite a few of them said they, hate, they hated Aletheia in the beginning, but by the end, they realized how much they had learned in the course because we gave them or I gave them enough opportunity to apply what they learned and they realized for the first time how much better their writing was and how much better their comprehension was of these very important and technical. In this regard, some kind of exposure therapy almost, 
right? With <laughs> them, right? With yeah, it's not supposed to be easy, right? I mean, I always make this analogy to the world of you know exercise or gym, right? Nobody likes to start exercising. It hurts. It sucks even in the beginning, right? But then yeah. it's supposed to happen, right? It's a process. What do we see at the end, Tracy? Have you been able to see demonstrative, quantitative uh, changes in your students um, on like capacity to succeed? Absolutely. Like I said, their their writing has improved so much. Their comprehension, their ability to meet the learning objectives of the course have just, or the courses, have been just amazing. I teach a course for the College of Education on um, interpreting, well, finding and interpreting and using primary research in the field of education and related topics. So one of the things that I learned immediately is that my students had no idea how to interpret the findings of a primary research study. And now, by the end of my course, they're all able to do it. Some of them, like you said, it's harder for them than others, but because I can find where they're, where I'm losing them, I'm able to course correct and get them back on, on task. And I don't have to do that for everyone, but I'm able to reach out to those students that really need a little bit more instruction or just a different type of instruction. We found that when they take this course, my course, and then they take the applied research course, they do so much better. They they catch on so much faster. And then their their overall results in the course are so much better. And so that transfer of learning is happening. And that is so exciting. Incredible. As have you seen this? actually being translated into a change of in grades or, or their past fail uh, rates? So I had talked to um, Dr. Alta, who teaches the other course, and she said that she saw uh, an immediate difference between these students that she had in fall of uh, 2023 and the students that she had in the um, fall of 2024 or 2022. So she had much higher success rates, and I did as well. There is a, a culminating assignment in both of our courses in which the average grade for me on that culminating assignment was a D, and for her it was a C. And those have now moved to mine is now an A, and hers is a B. So that's a huge, and hers is a harder course. <laughs> so to get a B in her course is really phenomenal. And that that's the average grade is just, it is a high B, so like B plus. So we're really excited by these results. I feel like I'm getting better as an instructor. So I think our students are going to continue to benefit from the improvement in my teaching. Well, one of the things I keep telling the provost is that we have yet to have a faculty member who has used Olivia to want to stop using Olivia. They all want to use it. And now most of us are using it in every single course that we teach. <laughs> um, and so because we know how powerful it is, I remember when we all saw for the first time uh, a redacted name, right? We anonymized view of an engagement between a student in her course and the Aletheia coach. And even her mouth dropped open. We were like, this is incredible. She's like, this, it sounds like, it looks like the student is talking to a business faculty member about business concepts and business strategy. And it was just a beautiful thing to see. And, and who knows when it happened, it could have been happening at two o'clock in the morning. So the students have access to this type of assistance that the university could never provide, could never provide on a consistent basis. We even have our, our um, associate vice president of student success view the results, and he said the same thing. And he's in charge of tutoring and other support services for our students. 
and he is blown away by the tool. It's just been phenomenal. And every time we've asked students, if you had this available to you outside of class, would you use it? There's not one student that said no, not one. So students are finding Aletheia to be incredibly helpful for them and, and they want to continue using it. As I said before, I could, we couldn't ask for better partners. Uh, we can ask for more such partners and we do. Uh, in, in, in this partnership is unbelievable to us. Tracy, thank you so much for taking the time for this conversation. Um, looking forward to many more uh, semesters and successes together. Thank you so much. Thank you.